Hey guys, uh, this is Samuel Amroson and once again, in the previous video we looked at how to install Git, whereby you just need to go to the Git website and then download the latest version of Git which is compatible with your operating system. In this video, however, we are going to look at something quite, uh, which is quite different, which is, I refer, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know where to start from, but uh, we are going to look at the modes of operation in the Git environment. So what kind of environments do we have out there to operate uh, with Git? The first one is the configuration mode, whereby you just need to, you know, uh, con uh, uh, after downloading the Git, uh, installing the Git, then you need to uh, configure the Git by putting some of the details which will identify you as the user of the Git. Uh, so that when you commit uh, your work or done something, Git will know exactly who has done it. And this is very important, especially when you're working in a collaborative environment where you have a team. So that when you commit something, that ID, the identification, will indicate you to the manager. So then the manager know that, okay, this commit comes from Sam, and this is his user ID, this is his uh, email, so I know Sam has done this. And the manager would be able to uh, to locate, to pinpoint exactly who is doing what in a team. That's why the configuration mode is very important. So you need to configure your email uh, address and your name. And then after that, you initialize uh, the Git in order to create a Git repository. So after creating Git repository, that would means you have a working environment in the folder which is now a git repo so in that folder you can now do your work you do the coding you do all sorts of activities on the file that you want to control its version and share it with others and you do that inside the repository and that is your working environment after that my friend then you know you put your work into a staging mode Think of staging as, you know, your, you know, just imagine you are traveling using public means, for example, and there's some stage or bus stage somewhere where you need to go and stand to wait for the bus to come and take you to your desired destination. Staging is like that. It's like putting the work or the file that you have worked on somewhere temporarily so that you can be able to move it to a permanent location. It's like a temporary memory, a memory that is keeping your work temporarily for it to be kept somewhere, you know, permanently afterward. So staging uh, involves adding the files that you have worked on and to, to the queue in a memory for it to be committed. And that, my friend, it is a very, very important stage because from there, my friend, you can view your work, you can see what you've done so far, you can review, you can delete, you can modify, you can continue working from there. And revision is very important because it makes you uh, decide whether what you've done is good or not and you can tweak and twist, you can just decide even to delete what you have staged so far. After doing the revision or reviewing your code, reviewing the changes that you have made, my friend, you can now go ahead and, and commit your work. So committing is like adding uh, the final version of your work permanently somewhere in the memory for the future use. So that equates to scalability because, you know, when you are committing, it's like you are writing something on top of something that has already existed previously. So you are adding something on top. And by doing that, 
you are scaling it up that's why I decided to uh, mention to indicate this stage to be uh, I mean this mode to be like a scalability mode you know then after that my friend after finishing your work now you can collaborate with others you can network with others to share the work that you have done you can push it to the github or you know you can be able to uh, to allow people to come to your call to check what you've done and also even uh, for example if you're working with the management the manager who is perhaps managing a given project will be able now to access your your work via the github and that is why collaboration is very important because from there you can share your code you can share the version of your work you can work together in a team my friend that environment is very unique and it is what makes git the most powerful uh, version control or distributed source control system for us to share our work anywhere in the world for example a manager the manager may be somewhere in america one of the teams could be like in china another one will be in europe so it is the networking and collaboration capability of git that will enable us to do everything on the github somewhere on the internet so github will join us together to join you together to to share your work so that it makes all the management of software development project easy and simple so my friend there's what we call git and github help and support make sure you use that uh, environment as well they say a strong support environment provided by git uh, both at the level of operations as well as the documentations and the community that you can even join so git provide everything all the materials are there on the website where you can read what you feel you don't know as well as the manual so everything is there just feel free to use this git and github help and the supporting system and that environment will enable you to gain or to learn what you feel you might have not learned before or something that you might have forgotten and would like to improve on so make sure you use that very very well i always use git help it's very 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 important so my friend, to achieve all these uh, modes of operation, to be able to operate in a Git environment, you need at least, I would say at least 25 Git skills to master. These skills are all about the operations of Git that you need in order for you to be able to control your version, to manipulate your work, to share your work with others, and to let others share your work. So these skills are the ones we are going to use in this course so that you can have Git and the GitHub in your fingertips. So thank you for viewing. I hope this video has been informative and I will see you in the next video to come. My name is once again Samuel Ambrose, your tutor for understanding Git and GitHub. Remember, we are doing this to, uh, to allow you to become the best software engineer. I am preparing you to become the best software engineer. That's why I want you to know Git in and out and to know how to control your, your file, to manage your files in and out before actually diving deep into programming. Because all our source codes, everything that we will be doing, I will be sharing it with you in the GitHub. So that you can be able to go back in the history, uh, you know, be able to see what we have done so far. Even you yourself, you are 
exercises, the activities that you will be doing, the small projects that you will be doing, make sure you open up the GitHub account so that you can share your work from there. And that will be your portfolio that your employer would love to see before employing you, you know, to see the work you've done so far in terms of exercises, the projects, and many more. So GitHub is the place for us to be in. It's just like an open heaven because it has that power and capabilities to unite all the tech guys from all over the world to enjoy coding, to enjoy working on any technical project or working in a team. So thank you for viewing. I'll see you in the next video where we are going to start exploring uh, these modes of operation in the Git environments one by one. So we are going to go through all the 25 Git skills to master Git. And all those 25 are just operations that you need to get used to. And we are going to see them one by one, step by step in the next video. So thank you for viewing. I'll see you in the next coming video.